Hello, dear friends. I had another article prepared, but this news has broken all my plans. Opinion piece. Towards a digital peseta. Its value would be linked to the digital euro. Cash payments are lowered to 1,000 euros. The government wants to control our money. It wants, it wants a direct and totalitarian control of cash. The PSOE seeks Spanish public cryptocurrency. It would put an end to the privilege of banks over money. It would be an official Bitcoin for a direct control of the money. Its objective would be to capture the new forms to, of digital payments. The European Central Bank has not made any pronouncement on the matter. A digital euro would affect Europe's monetary sovereignty. A major global financial market transition is coming. Trump's company to be indicted Thursday for tax crimes. Global Bitcoin attacks up 200% in 2021. China's Bitcoin crackdown benefits the world's miners. IMF approves $23.3 billion Sudan debt relief. Elon Musk announces that by August there will be internet almost everywhere on the planet. Let's start. A Spanish digital currency would end the bank's privilege over money, but it will also facilitate direct and totalitarian control of money by the cash-strapped Spanish government. The PSOE proposal defines a national digital currency as a digital public money, in quotes, intangible and perfectly usable to make electronic payments, but in this case blocked by the state, making it a safe money, close quotes. Its aim would be to capture new forms of digital payment outside the official banking circuit. This is known as shadow banking. To this end, the first step would be the creation of a study group to evaluate the possibility of implementing a public digital currency, a digital euro used, issued in the form of a cryptocurrency by the European Central Bank, so that it would have the backing of the countries of the Eurozone and the European Union, and would provide financial stability to the Spanish and European Union economies. The Spanish Socialist Workers' Party, the political governing body in Spain, has proposed the creation of a national digital currency in response to the decline in the use of physical cash, according to the Spanish newspaper El Economista, reports Andrés Engler. The, so the Socialist Party is preparing the creation of a public cryptocurrency. The Socialist Parliamentary Group has presented in Congress a non-law proposition to promote the creation of a public currency in the face of the gradual disappearance of cash. The socialists argue that the new payment trends lead to a purely private, private and more insecure money. The parliamentarians are committed to the recovery of money as a public good, more stable are, and under supposed democratic control, as a state, stated in the text of the proposal according to Ignacio Faes. The PSOE is promoting this measure after the European Central Bank announced its intentions to create a digital euro. The Deputy Director General of Financial Innovation and Market Infrastructures of the Bank of Spain, Carlos Conesa, said this month that the decision to launch a project of the digital euro is very close. Most central banks plan to reset to test these digital currencies or are already doing so. 
Conesa notes that the decision to issue a digital euro has not yet been taken, although he pointed out that it is foreseeable that the government, governing council of the European Central Bank will meet soon to decide to launch a research, a research project that would increase the degree of preparation and knowledge of the euro system in this area. Economy Digital euro affects monetary sovereignty. Europe's sovereign control over its money is at risk if it goes ahead with plans for a digital euro and the European payment system, the head of France central bank said Wednesday. More than 30 European banks are currently setting up a retail system for instant trans transactions and payment cards to compete in a market currently dominated by foreign firms such as Visa and Mastercard. European Union could be destroyed by national legal challenges wants Brussels. The European Union Union's Justice Commissioner has vowed to fight the proliferation of legal challenges and rulings by member states that have attacked the supremacy of European Union law, warning that they could destroy the Union itself. The European Commission this month launched legal proceedings against Germany in response to an explosive ruling by its constitutional court last year because it had acted beyond its competence in a case involving the European Central Bank's bond purchases. IMF approves $23.3 billion debt relief for Sudan. The International Monetary Fund announced Tuesday that it approved debt relief for Sudan in the total amount of $23.3 billion under the joint initiative with the World Bank, called heavily indebted poor countries. According to both agencies, this is the largest operation under the program, which has previously benefited 37 nations. Wall Street closes with gains. Wall Street closed in the green on Tuesday with a 0.03% rebound in the Dow Jones Industrials and the new record highs in the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq, after a new batch of economic data. Trump's company will be charged Thursday with tax crimes. New York prosecutors plan to file criminal charges Thursday against the former president's company and its chief financial officer, Allen Weisselberg, for alleged tax crimes, the Wall Street Journal said Wednesday. Trump himself is not expected to be charged in person, but his organization is. Spain. The Spanish government will submit the 26 gigahertz band to public consultation this year. The government plans to submit to public consultation before the end of the, of the year the process of defining the terms of the auction of the 26 gigahertz band, one of the three necessary for the five cuts, on which it is not ruled out that a part will end up being reserved for industrial uses. The Congress approves a law that reduces cash payments to 1,000 euros. The Congress of Deputies has approved this Wednesday, in a definitive way, the law of prevention and fight against tax fraud, which includes measures such as the limitation of cash payments to 1,000 euros or the prohibition of tax amnesties. However, the European Central Bank recommends a limit of 10,000 euros for cash payments instead of 1,000 euros as in Spain. Sun starved Brits flood Mallorca Island. Beach hungry British tourists flocked to the Spanish island of Mallorca on Wednesday after London added the Balearic archipelago to its green trip list, 
raising hopes of a better tourist season after a disastrous 2020. Bookings for Spain in July and August reached 79% of those registered in 2019. Tourist bookings for Spain in July and August, in July and August, already reached 79% of those registered in 2019 until the same month, with an average duration slightly higher, higher than the pre-crisis situation, and which stands at five nights, according to the Spanish online travel agency Destinia. Police arrest in Toledo a jihadist with more than 60 manuals on explosives. Agents of the National Police have arrested in the town of Santa Olaya, Toledo, a suspected jihadist who had more than 60 manuals on the manufacture of explosives, preparation of poisons, night combat tactics and sniper. He also carried out a massive consumption of violent extremist content and Salafist speeches collected from Daesh repositories. Wild news. Turkey relies on Russian tourism to recover from ruin. Despite still being on the red list of several of its major travel sending countries, Turkey expects the tourist season to reach, if not pre-crisis levels, then at least much better figures than the last year's disaster, mainly thanks to visitors from Russia. The world economy could lose $4 trillion due to the crisis in tourism. The fall in international tourism due to the health crisis could, cut, could cause losses of more than $4 trillion in the world economy between 2020 and 2021 assured the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, in a report published jointly with the World Tourism Organization. The strong heat wave that hits Canada with temperatures of up to 50 degrees leaves at least 200 dead. The Canadian authorities have warned that more than 200 people have died because of the strong heat wave that hits the country after record temperatures of up to 49.6 degrees centigrade were recorded this Tuesday in the town of Leeton, in the province of British Columbia, which is the most affected. Sudden deaths in two days at height of heat wave in Vancouver. Several dozen people died suddenly between Monday and Tuesday in the Vancouver area. Deaths likely related to the heat wave sweeping Western Canada and parts of the North instead United States Canadian Federal Police announced Tuesday. Taliban to take over Afghanistan when U.S. leaves. U.S. troops plan to leave Afghanistan this year. Afghan security forces will be left alone in their fight against the Taliban, who despite signing an agreement with the U.S., have not given up their plan to dominate all of Afghanistan. Corporations Elon Musk announces that by August there will be internet almost everywhere on the planet, thanks to the Starlink satellite constellation. He also stressed that SpaceX is working on next generation antennas that can offer the same service at a lower price. Space, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk announced Tuesday that the Starlink broadband satellite internet service will be available in a few weeks almost everywhere on the planet. Microsoft and Google end six-year trust on legal battles. Microsoft and Google have ended a nearly six-year six trust to avoid open warfare between the rival technology giants, clearing the way for direct conflict as regulators take aim at barriers 
to competition between the major technology groups. JP Morgan makes Paris its post Brexit European trading headquarters. JP Morgan has officially moved the firm's trading center to Europe. The move comes as France looks to welcome more investment banking business and as a London finance work has relocated as a result of Brexit. JP Morgan Chase Bank's main business center is now located in Paris. The opening of the new headquarters took place on Tuesday this week. Intel delays new chip production plans. Intel Corp has postponed production of one of its newest chips to improve performance, the Wall Street Journal reported. Intel plans to start producing the central processing units for servers in early 2022 from previously planned for the late 2021. Intel is buying time to improve the performance of its chips with respect to data handling and artificial intelligence processing. UBS joins peers to track how loans affect the environment and jobs. A group of banks, including UBS and Singapore DBS, announced plans Wednesday to create a new way to measure the environmental and social impact of their financing. China China's Bitcoin crackdown, a boom for miners elsewhere. Just weeks after an effective purge of China's big Bitcoin miners, reduced competition for Bitcoin blocks rewards has dramatically improved profitability prospects for mining operations elsewhere. Attacks on, bi on Bitcoin have increased by almost 200% in 2021. In six months, attacks increased by 192%. Dot. The attacks analyzed were mostly phishing and commercial emails which targeted Bitcoin users. The data reveals a parallel between the increase in these attacks and the rise in the price of Bitcoin between October 2020 and May 2021. China manufacturing slows as supply shortages hit. Growth in China's manufacturing activity in June fell to a four-month low due to rising raw material costs and semiconductor shortages amid broader supply chain disruptions in Asia. China eradicates malaria after 70 years of fighting. China has succeeded in eradicating malaria at, after 70 years of fighting the mosquito-borne disease. The country, with 30 million cases per year in the 1940s, has now recorded a single case for the past four years. This parasitic disease that is transmitted by the Anopheles mosquito killed more than 400,000 people in 2019, mostly in Africa. China's biggest bank abandons Zimbabwe coal plant. China's biggest bank abandoned the plan to finance a $3 billion coal-fired power plant in Zimbabwe, dealing a blow to coal developers in Africa, who see the Asian country as the latest potential financer of their projects. 80-year-old Japanese company may hold key to next-generation ships. A Japanese company that began making grinding wheels for machinery more than 80 years ago believes it holds the key for, to helping manufacturers create ever thinner, more powerful semiconductors to power next generation cell phones and advanced computers. Disco Corp's machines can grind a silicon wafer to near transparent thinness and cut the tip of a hair into 35 sections. Indian rupee posts its biggest monthly drop in 15 months. The Indian rupee posted its biggest monthly fall since the start of the country's health crisis in March last year. Pressured by high local crude oil prices and concerns that the Federal Reserve may hint at 
tapering its massive stimulus. Reset news. The Bigfoot recess. Since last year, gasoline is up 56%, used cars are, are up 30%, airfares are up 24%, and car rentals are up 110% in the US. As Glenn Beck says here, we are being priced into submission, so the banks are no longer content to own your motish. They want your house. They want real assets. Big pensions funds are buying up entire neighborhoods and towns to rent them out, because you will owe nothing and be happy. Global blockades have caused supply chain collapses everywhere. Food could not be planted or harvested. Food was rotting in warehouses because no one could ship it, because everyone was locked out. The globalists are blaming all this on climate change, but it is a highly engineered collapse. Farmers, meat industry, cattle ranchers, all are slowly and methodically depleting themselves. The storm starts with finance. A mini collapse of the Dow Jones in March 2020 was due to Trump putting and King Salman removing Rockefeller's control of oil, leading to the Fed merging with the Treasury in May 2020. In a one-year deal that led to the Fed's ultimate demise in May 2021. The top brass of the British general staff is confinement after their plans to create a false flag, a false flag attack with Russia were rebuilt. Benjamin Fulford, Fulford announces the possible holding of a Yalta conference next fall to decide on the reform of international institutions. The military has ordered the police of several Western countries to stop protecting their governments, as all have been compromised, say MI6 sources. June 29 saw a return to normalcy. With large tra traffic on Southern California freeways and roads closed as usual, trucking companies reported that they were allowed to resume picking up loads. The hundreds of cheap ships at sea were also believed to be allowed to dock, and ports appeared to be operating at capacity once again. Gas stations across the country are running out of gas, just as 43 million Americans prepare to hit the road for the 4th of July holiday weekend. Government is the problem, not the solution. After 13 years of the the deepening recession and most recently the healthcare crisis, now is the time to change course. In a democracy, governments are elected by people to serve them, which is not the case as has so far been amply demonstrated. They have the power to tax, detain, imprison, and send young men and women to fight wars in foreign countries. They regulate in the business, debase money, obstruct trade by embargoes, and control everything they can think of. Governments are not serving the public. People are now seeing a different economy. They are experiencing central bank economics on its way out. People are experiencing inflation, and this is the indicator that wakes people up, because it happens in real time. Countries are now moving away from fiat money and moving towards a sound currency. We have done our best to inform the public about what has been happening on our planet, right under our noses, that many ignore. Those who refuse to look will no longer have the option of avoiding the horrible truths and will go a little crazy. Those who thought movies television and video games were strictly for entertainment will get a wake-up call. When those eight-hour loops 
of pre-recorded videos start being broadcast by satellite to everyone in every country of the world in every language, it would be an amazing leap toward our ascension. What is coming will show the world that thanks to the legion of benevolent beings we are the victors, not the victims, and that we won the eternal battle of good over evil. This will be a miracle when most of our planet didn't even know there was a war. Attorney Ling Wood said, in quotes, Our legal system is overwhelmed by corrupt judges and lawyers who care money about money, who care more about money than clients and principals. The love of money is truly the root of all evil. Power and influence come with wealth. Too many wealthy people believe they are above the law. Quill of Squats and thank a lot, thanks a lot, dear friends, and have a good week.